does not fast, who does not fast, who has a legitimate excuse for not fasting, there are four categories of people who have a legitimate excuse. My dear brothers and sisters, unfortunately, we have a, t a problem now where people become too lax and they simply assume that fasting is not necessary for the most trivial reason. No, fasting is one of the arkan of Islam. Fasting is one of the obligations of Islam. Fasting was revealed in the very second year of the hijrah. After the Prophet emigrated, the very first thing that came in on after salah was fasting and zakah. They both came down, right? basically right after the hijrah, by a few months, they came down. And fasting is an obligation upon every single Muslim who is capable of doing so. There are four categories of those who are excused from the fasting. The first and the most common one is the woman in her monthly cycle or after she delivers and she is bleeding in that portion, the nifas months. So the woman in her hayyid, in her menses, and the woman in her nifas, this, uh, such a lady obviously does not fast and she makes it up later on. Now, my dear sisters in Islam, do not play around with the sharia of Allah. Many sisters are lazy when their menses finish. They think they can delay the fast simply by not performing the ghusl, by delaying the, the full ritual ablution. Allah Azza wa Jal knows when your menses finish and you know as well. And when your menses finish, the very next day you must begin your fast. In fact, if your menses finish even five minutes before the Fajr Adhan, the time of Imsak, and you know the sign which is the whitest discharge. If your menses finish five minutes before the Adhan of Fajr, then legally, even if you do not take the ghusl, you must fast that day. So keep this point in mind and monitor the end of the month. You all know your, your cycles, you all know your routines. Towards the end of the month, monitor and realize that if it finishes, wake up the day that you think it's going to finish. Wake up before Fajr to make sure that in fact it has finished or not finished. Because if it has finished, then that day is obligatory on you and it is not allowed to play games with the sharia of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the first category. The second category are men and women who are sick and traveling. And this category, it is permissible for you to fast. It is permissible for you to leave the fast. It's up to you. But the better thing to do is that if fasting is a hardship, then you should not fast. If fasting complicates your medical problem. If fasting is a hardship during travel, and you know best, travel is relative. For some of us, traveling is an hour and a half drive in the air-conditioned car. In such a case, maybe don't break the fast if you don't want to. Sometimes traveling involves a 15-hour journey across the, the globe, in which case fasting will be a big problem. You know best. And our Prophet ﷺ said, it is not righteousness to fast while traveling, meaning if it's difficult to fast, Allah will not reward you if you're causing hardship when you are fasting uh, during travel. You decide if it's a piece of cake, if it's easy, then go ahead and fast. Also in terms of sickness, what constitutes a legitimate sickness? The response is common sense will tell you. You don't need to go to a, a doctor or even an alim. Common sense will tell you. If you have a little bruise or cut on your finger, that's not going to cause you to not fast. But if you have a high fever, subhanAllah, you need your liquids, you need to drink all day long, you need this, you need that. A high fever definitely is an excuse for uh, leaving the fast and then making it up on a later day. You know, use your better judgment. What sickness is such that it will complicate the fast uh, if I continue fasting? And there might be some gray areas here and there. You're not quite sure. So go ahead and attempt in the morning to fast. If you feel you're getting a more strong headache or this or that, your sickness is being complicated, then break the fast and Allah Azza wa Jal is forgiving and merciful. Also, there are gray areas of certain medical uh, issues such as diabetes and others. I cannot give you a blanket fatwa. Go to a Muslim doctor. And why do I say Muslim doctor? Because a Muslim will understand the obligation of fasting. Not that we don't trust a, a, a non-Muslim doctor, but a non-Muslim does not understand how important fasting is. A Muslim doctor will understand how important fasting is. So if you're diabetic, or if you have a chronic illness in this regard, go to a Muslim reputable doctor so that the Muslim doctor can weigh between, you know, in your case, if you have a heavy meal with these and these ingredients, and then you break your fast at the appropriate time, inshallah, it's okay. So the Muslim doctor can tell you this. Uh, as because the Muslim doctor has experience of fasting, and he knows the obligation of fasting. So if there are areas such as diabetes, such as other things of this nature, then go seek counsel with a health professional who understands the obligations of fasting. This is the second category, sickness and traveler. The third category of those who don't have to fast are those who are permanently sick or those who are too elderly and weak to fast. 
permanently sick, severe case of diabetes. Severe case of diabetes. He cannot remain without food for five hours, let's say. Khalas. So Allah Sharia has not come to kill people or to make life difficult. For such a person, somebody who is very old, 70, 80 years old, he cannot, he doesn't have it in him to fast. For such a person, the fasting is forgiven. And he will have to give a fidya, which is feeding one person one meal per day that he doesn't fast. And the average fidya in America is between eight to ten dollars. If you want to be safe, give ten. If you give eight dollars a day, no problem. And you have to give fidya according to the land you're living in. Don't calculate fidya based upon Pakistan or Bangladesh. Calculate fidya based upon America because you're living here. You may send it to Pakistan or Bangladesh, but it has to be eight dollars a day, not eight rupees a day. Because you're living in this land, so your fidya is calculated according to this. And this is the third category. The final category, and then we conclude our first khutbah. The final category is the category that's a bit of an ikhtilaf over and that is women who are pregnant and women who are uh, feeding children. This category is where many women show laxity. The fact of the matter is an average healthy young lady who is pregnant or who is feeding should not really have an excuse to break the fast. However, if the doctor says, or if she herself feels fainting or whatnot, then yes, we understand, and so the sharia will allow her to break the fast. Nonetheless, an average young healthy lady who is pregnant or who is feeding a child, generally speaking, should not just jump to the conclusion, I don't have to fast. Because the fasting, generally speaking, should not harm her situation. Nonetheless, let her seek the advice of her own professional counselor. And also, uh, uh, again, let's encourage a Muslim doctor who understands the importance of fasting. If the doctor feels, and if she as well feels, that fasting will not be possible, then she may avoid the fast, but she will have to make up the days that she has missed. She cannot give money because her ruling is the ruling of the one who was sick or traveling. That is, she will overcome the sickness, she will come back to a regular state, and she will then have to fast all of the days. And indeed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best.